Hey there, how's it going? It is your muscle building coach, Lee Hayward, with the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Live video chat for Friday, September the 28th. And today I'm gonna to be hanging out here and helping you out in any way that I can with answering your questions about building muscle, losing fat, any specific challenges that you may be dealing with when it comes to your workout or nutrition program. Hey, feel free to post those questions in our chat window and I'll be doing my best to help you out in any way that I can. Now, before we get into actually discussing the training and the nutrition and all these different strategies, for those of you who are watching live right now, can you let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me, if this is coming through loud and clear, and if you do that for me, I would really appreciate it, because I would hate to be talking here for an extended period of time to just dead air. So I always want to do that mic and audio check before we get going. All the regulars, you know the you know the drill. I, this is this is nothing new. I do this all the time, every video chat, just to make sure that it is coming through loud and clear before I get into answering your questions. All right, thanks guys, I appreciate it. Hopefully, we have a nice smooth chat this week. Uh, what I mean by that is no technical issues. Last week we, it was several minutes, and I couldn't get any of the questions and comments coming through on our chat window, but now they're coming through very uh, smooth just like they should be so we've got the mirrors joining it we've uh, joining us we've got hash fit jesse uh, jose great thanks guys everyone's saying it's come through loud and clear good stuff so again the way this is this chat works is i'd like you to post any questions comments or, or topics of discussion if there's anything that you you have some questions or concerns about with regards to fitness and nutrition Go ahead and post those there. If there's anything uh, you know that you're dealing with in terms of challenges or even sometimes some some time management strategies, this is a big one. I know I've been having some uh, discussions with some of my personal coaching students, and one of the biggest things that hold people back is sometimes time management. So if, if that's one of the things you want to have uh, have some issues with, hey, feel free to post it there in the uh, video chat window. We've got Yolo Drawl. I think that's how you pronounce it. He says, can I have a shout out? Yes, you can. I'm just giving you one right now. We have a nerd joining us. Nerd0034. He says, hi. Hi back to you. All right. Let's get into some questions here now. Uh, one of the things that I, I want to discuss uh, before we, we get into actually diving into these questions that are coming through is I often find that uh, a lot of people who are struggling with reaching their fitness goals you know whatever that may be be it building muscle losing fat or a combination of both and i actually put up a survey on the community tab of the total fitness bodybuilding channel uh, earlier today when i was just announcing this video chat and i put up a little survey there of what is it that you're actually trained for is it purely muscle building purely fat loss or both uh, building muscle and losing fat and i found that i think was over 70 percent are interested in building muscle or building muscle and losing fat. So there's not a whole lot of people tuning in here who want to just purely lose body fat. Most people either want to do a combination of both. Build muscle and or lose fat was the most popular. So I think that's uh, where a lot of people are in their, uh, in their struggles. And one of the things that I find that makes the biggest difference, it's not necessarily having more information. It's not uh, and, you know, the, the latest or greatest workout program. This never fails. Every time I do a video chat, well, not every time, but I'd say like most times I do a video chat, the phone rings. It's just like, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. That's probably some of my friends or, or, or someone just doing this for a prank because they probably are watching this and they know my home phone number and they ring the darn line every time I do a video chat. But anyway, it's gone. it's gone to message manager there now. Where was I? Somebody's doing this and laughing at me because I'm not telling you my home phone number because if I did, everybody would be ringing me up and <laughs> just trying to disturb the video chat. Anyway, what I was talking about there is uh, it's very often the reason why people are struggling, is it's not due to not having the, the right workout program or the right diet plan. Very often it's due to not acting quickly enough. Action is the key to success. And I'm going to tell you right now, I, I've seen a lot of people 
who overthink things. You know, they want to get the perfect program before they get started. They want to get the perfect diet plan before they get started. They and they overthink things and they try to plan out every detail in advance before they get started. I'm going to tell you right now, a half-assed program that you start and take action on today is going to be much more effective than the most perfectly planned program that you procrastinate on. So don't get tangled up in the weeds and trying to be perfect. Just take action and start moving yourself forward today. I mean, for your very next meal, your very next workout, just do something. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be moving you in the right direction. So, for example, if, if you're like thinking, well, I want to start my diet, don't wait till Monday. Start at your very next meal. And even if you don't have the kitchen stock with all the foods that you want to have for your so-called perfect diet plan, just make the best of what you can for your very next meal. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that some foods are better than others. I mean, if, if you're looking at the, the choices that you have, well, maybe I'll choose the natural unprocessed foods versus the processed ones. I have the choice to skip dessert, <laughs> you know, with my meal rather than eating dessert. You have some simple choices that you can make right now. And that will move you in the right direction. You know, if you want to start a workout program, you know, if, if you don't have a gym membership, you don't have any fitness equipment at home, you don't have to have that stuff. You can do a body weight workout. You can get outside and go for a walk. You know, if, if, if I'm stuck for, for a workout routine, like sometimes if, if I'm pressed for time and I know I can't make it to the gym and I'm just really pressed, but I still want to do something, I'll just do a circuit of push-ups. Uh, body weight squats, uh, probably doing some abdominal work like crunches, leg raises, or holding the plank position. And I'll just do that in a, in a circuit fashion for about 20 minutes. And I'm telling you, if you, if you do a set of push-ups, set of squats, do a set of ab work, rest a minute and repeat, and do that for 15 or 20 minutes, you are going to be you know, zapped. It is a very intense workout, and you can get a total body pump up just from those few exercises alone. And that is much better than either doing nothing or procrastinating and waiting till you can get to the gym for that so-called perfect workout. I mean, I, I do that probably a couple times a week. If, if I'm pressed for time and I, you know, got, got the baby is, is fussing sometimes and I can't get to the gym or just things are, are piling up on my plate and I'm just too busy, I'll throw in a little body weight circuit routine like that from time to time. And it is a great way to just get some extra training in without taking a lot of time. I mean, anybody can dedicate 15 or 20 minutes. I don't care how busy you are, especially 15 or 20 minutes that doesn't require any equipment whatsoever. So as far as, as your program's concerned, it really doesn't come down to being perfect or having the ideal situation. It just comes down to you taking action with what you have available right now. So that is the thing that's going to separate the people who get good results and people who are struggling and saying, I'm not getting any results is just taking action. That's all it is. So with that, I'm going to take some action now and answer some questions. Let's see what we got coming through here. Uh, just coming through, we have Weird Day at Doe Ali. He says he's a big fan from the UK. We have Jesse. Okay, Jesse's got a question here. Due to budget reasons, I may have to cut the gym out for a while. What are some things... Uh, I would need for a decent home gym to not lose any progress that I've made so far. All right. I would seriously consider, try and reconsider your whole situation here, saying that you may have to cut out the gym. Now, obviously, I don't know your financial situation, but is there somewhere else in your life that you could cut back rather than cutting back on the gym? And the reason why I say that is because your health and fitness is, if, if you're looking at the priority of things in your life, Health and fitness should be way up at the top. I mean, if there's other things that you can cut out, then cut that out first. Uh, so again, I'm just, I don't know your whole situation, but I mean, I would strongly suggest looking for somewhere else rather than your gym membership. Now, if it is going to be the gym and you need to scale down, look at other alternatives. There are cheaper gyms around. I, I've seen places in, in the States uh, that have like $10 a month memberships. You know, some places have really cheap membership rates. So if, if you have other options, look into that. Uh, another option that you can check out is the YMCA. The YMCA is a charity organization, and they will offer sponsored gym memberships 
based on your own financial situation. So if, if you're a low income earner and you're really strapped for cash, you can go and talk to somebody at the YMCA and they will come up with a solution that fits your budget. Now it won't be a free membership, but it'll be a very affordable one. I mean, I know people who are like going paying like five bucks a month for a membership at the YMCA because that's all they can afford. So you will have to pay something, but it'll be within your budget. So there are alternatives that you can look into and, and to still, you know, get to the gym and save some money. Now, if, if you're looking for, if you're looking for a home gym and uh, the first thing I would do is go through the local classifieds and see what type of equipment you can find. Because if you're going to go and buy brand new gym equipment that is of any decent quality, it's going to cost a lot of money. I mean, I'll tell you right now, I bought used equipment for my home gym and it still costs thousands of dollars buying it used. And I mean, I came out saving about 50% over what it would have cost if I went out and bought that equipment new. So if you're strapped for money and you can't afford a gym membership, going out and buying a home gym, <laughs> that's not going to save you money. I mean, up front, it's probably going to be a hell of a lot more expensive than paying for your monthly gym membership. And in fact, I know it's going to be. Like I say, to me, even if you're just getting like a barbell and dumbbell set, I mean, that's that's going to probably be a couple hundred bucks to get a decent barbell and dumbbell set, you know, depending on what brand you get and where you find it and whether it's new or used or whatever. But if you really need some economical gym equipment get a set of adjustable tension rubber fitness bands uh, ones that i've used myself are body elastic bands you can go to bodyelasticbands.com and check it out and these are adjustable tension bands that you can do a lot of cable exercises and machine exercises using re rubber resistance bands and that's a, a good alternative to kind of get you out of a jam. I have, a lot of times I'll take them with me if I'm traveling or something like that, or if I'm camping and I don't have access to any exercise equipment, I'll take the rubber bands with me so I can get in a decent workout. But that will probably be the cheapest alternative. But again, compared to a proper gym, you know, it, it's it's not going to be a, an equal payoff. I mean, you, you're still much better off going to the gym if you can make it happen. All right, let's move on. I know that's kind of a long-winded answer, and I'm going to try and do more rapid fire with these because I do sometimes get rambling too much. Manuel is joining us. He says, "Hi Lee, I'm doing a clean bulk up. Does eating peanut? I'm doing a clean bulk up. Does eating a peanut butter sandwich? All right, we have a break here. I don't know if he has it continued on somewhere else. Okay, here's the other. Uh, doing a clean bulk up. Does eating a peanut butter sandwich have good calories? Yes." I'm telling you right now, peanut butter sandwiches. When I was younger and bulking up, going to college, that was my secret weapon was the peanut butter sandwich. Peanut butter and jelly. I used to put some uh, some jam on there as well to kind of make it easier to eat because peanut butter by itself can be a bit thick and dry. So I'd have one slice of bread, would have the peanut butter on it. The other slice would have strawberry jam or raspberry jam or something like that. Slap those two together and boy, golly, you got yourself a high calorie uh, snack or lunch option there. Uh, my bulk up diet plan back when I was in college used to be uh, a big bottle of water. So I have a gallon jug of water. I would have four peanut butter and jam sandwiches and I would have two uh, baked chicken breasts. And that's what I used to pack in my lunch bag every day when I was going to college. And the way it worked is we had a 10 minute break in between classes. So we never had a full proper lunch break but we had these little mini 10 minute breaks in between each class. So what I would do is in between a class, I would like chow down on a peanut butter sandwich in between the next class. I'd probably chow down on a chicken breast and then, you know, the next class chow down on another sandwich. And, and over the course of the day, I made sure that in between classes in my, in those little 10 minute breaks, I ate all my peanut butter sandwiches and all my chicken breasts. And of course I would drink that, gallon jug of water i'd sip on it throughout the day so at the end of the school day i had all that food gone and that worked really well for helping me to fill up my frame with muscular body weight i mean so that was my strategy that i did for my school lunches while i was bulking up so yeah it's it's a great alternative because it's high in calories and it's it's cheap it's convenient i mean for a bulk up program you can't go wrong Unless, of course, you're allergic to peanut butter. Then then you have to look for another alternative. But if you can eat peanut butter, hey, go for it. Okay, we have uh, 
Raul is joining us. Uh, we have Daniel, and he says, I recently checked my blood pressure and it was slightly elevated. Is that to do with weightlifting? Any idea on how to lower it? All right, there's a lot of things that could be the root cause of blood pressure issues. And I, I'm not a doctor, I'm not gonna try and pretend to know it all, but you wanna look at your overall lifestyle in general. There's a lot of things. I mean, diet is one, if your, your weight, if you're overweight, that could cause high blood pressure. So I mean, generally speaking, losing excess body weight helps to lower your blood pressure. Stress is a big cause of blood pressure issues. So if you are under stress, be that work, school, financial, family, whatever, relationship, I mean, any type of stress will elevate your blood pressure. So that's something you want to look into. Um, I mean, the, the, this could be a broad topic of, of things. And I'd really, in order to kind of offer any specific advice, I'd need to know more about you and what you're going through. But those are some things that you can look into. I mean, to to check your, your blood pressure. Uh, I would highly uh, recommend avoiding getting suckered into the whole blood pressure medication. This is a hot topic these days. I mean, you go to your doctor. I mean, the doctors want to put everybody on blood pressure medication. They want to put everybody on cholesterol medication. And what, while on the surface, it seems like they mean well, it's, it's really just a, a money and cash grab. I mean, I know there are some people out there who probably have no other alternative, but very often you can improve this situation with better lifestyle choices. And I remember a while back, I was reading some of the fine print on, on it wasn't blood pressure medication. I believe it was cholesterol medication. But I just want to kind of give you an example of, of what I'm getting at here. The whole, it was a, a full page ad in a magazine saying this, this cholesterol medication. And they're saying, oh, you know, this is the key. This is going to lower your cholesterol. This is going to extend your life, blah, blah, blah. And then in that fine print, the, the print that you need a freaking magnifying glass in order to read, uh, I read it. And it said that the medication uh, improved cholesterol by 7%. Then it went on to say the placebo, which means nothing, a sugar pill, improved their cholesterol by 5%. So this medication was only 2% better than nothing at all. I mean, taking a placebo got 5% of the results. Taking this full-on medication got 7% results. And then when you look at the list of side effects that was associated from this medication, I mean, it's, it's probably worse than the high cholesterol to begin with. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really, I, I know there's a time and a place for prescription drugs in some situations, but if you can avoid it and you can improve your situation with better health and fitness and lifestyle choices, better diet, exercise and all that, go that route before you go looking for the medication route. Not only is it cheaper, but it's ultimately a lot healthier in the long run. All right. So anyway, those are some... That's that's my rant on blood pressure and prescription drugs. Let's move on. We have OO saying, what's up, Lee? And we have Woodulos, a regular joining us. He says, hey, Lee, how's the cut coming along? Uh, I'm not really calling this a cut. Uh, my whole fit over 40 challenge, yes, I have been leaning out, and I am going to be posting some progress pictures very soon. In fact, my birthday is coming up. Like, like soon, soon, next week soon. So I'm going to be posting some progress pictures to show you how things have been going along, how, how things have been coming along uh, over the past several months. Uh, but the, the key that I'm doing with this Fit Over 40 challenge that is, ha, has been different in the past is I'm not trying to go to extremes. I'm not trying to cut, so to speak. I'm not trying to deprive myself. I'm not trying to... Uh, do anything that's not maintainable. I'm just making better choices because I want the results that I get to last a lifetime. It's not like in the past when I would deprive myself and I'd bust my ass for a short term to get ready for like a bodybuilding competition. I mean, that is a different mindset. And I can tell you from experience that the amount of effort that goes into like a hardcore cut, like a pre-contest competition diet, yes, it works. Yes, it delivers fast results but it's not maintainable for the long term. And if, if you talk to any competitive bodybuilder, you know, you'll, you'll hear the same thing. Like you ask them, okay, could you maintain the, the diet that you followed for your competition? Could you maintain that for the rest of your life? And they're like, hell no, right? Because they just become obsessed with food. 
because you're so deprived, you're you're so de depleted, and you're busting your ass doing hours of cardio and endless training sessions that you can only withstand that for so long before you have to give in. So what I'm trying to do now is develop an eating and lifestyle pattern that allows me to get leaner without suffering or depriving myself. And I've pretty much got a good system in place. I have to say, I've been, like I say, you'll see when I post my progress pictures next week, I've leaned out significantly. Again, I'm not contest shredded by no stretch of the imagination am I contest shredded. But I've leaned out significantly. I feel a lot better. I feel healthier. And I'm not killing myself in the process. I mean, I'm going to the gym probably three days a week. That's what I'm averaging. Three workouts a week. And then in addition to that, I'm doing cardio, like going for walks. That's my main form of cardio. And I try to incorporate the family with that. Like take my son for a walk in the stroller. Or sometimes we'll, uh, I got a bicycle seat for him. If, if you follow me on Facebook or whatever, you've probably seen some uh, pictures where we posted up. He, he sits in the, in the bicycle seat and we go for a bike ride together. I mean, that's the kind of cardio that I'm doing. It's, again, it's not crazy intense, but it's physical activity, getting out there, burning some fat and calories, and trying to have this healthy approach where I'm getting leaner without torturing myself in the process. And it's, it's something that I enjoy doing. I mean, with my diet, Yes, I'm eating clean. Yes, I'm making better food choices, but I'm not stressing over it. I mean, we'll still go out to dinner. We'll still enjoy, you know, uh, family get togethers and things like that. But I just make that work into my program without stressing about it. And, you know, so far, so good. I got to say, I, I really enjoy the approach. And uh, I'll, I'll make a video where I actually go into detail about this later on. But uh, thank you for asking. All right, we have Manuel joining us. He says, Lee, I'm... Oh, wait, no, that was the same question there, just about the peanut butter sandwiches. I'll skip that. We have Nerd34. Where are you there? Okay, Nerd34 says, Lee, I'm losing body fat just fine, but I'm losing muscle. How can I stop the muscle loss? All right. With, when it comes to losing body fat and losing muscle, sometimes... We, we mistakenly think that we have more muscle than we really do. If you've never went on a, a fat loss program before, you probably have, like I say, you don't fully understand how the body composition works. Because when you lose body fat, like, like for example, like you go on a, a diet the first month, you could very easily lose 10 to 15 pounds or more in that first month. Is that going to be 10 to 15 pounds of pure body fat? No. A lot of it is going to be water weight. A lot of it's going to be intestinal bloat. And it, it's it's just getting rid of all that gunk in your system. And when you lose that water weight, and you if, especially if you follow some sort of lower carbohydrate diet, you're going to lose some muscle glycogen and ultimately lose some water and fullness from the muscle. That's going to make you think that you're losing muscle tissue when in reality, it's not. You're, you're just losing water weight. Now, water weight is technically lean mass. So yeah, you are losing lean mass, but it's not actual muscle tissue that you're losing. So in that initial phase of a fat loss program, a lot of people get frustrated because like I say, they'll lose say 15 pounds in their first month. And they say like, I don't look any different. I'm just a smaller version of what I was. And that's because all you really lost was the, the water and the bloat and a little bit of body fat maybe, but not enough to make any significant difference to your definition. Once you get beyond that first month, now you're going to actually get into losing actual body fat. The rate of weight loss is going to drop significantly, but the weight that you do lose from this point on is going to be primarily stored body fat. And what you'll find is as you adapt to the new diet and the new lifestyle approach that you're following in order to lose the fat, you will actually start to regain some of your muscle strength, some of your muscle fullness, and you'll actually start to feel better. But it's in that initial transition when you really feel flat and depleted initially. It's almost like letting the air out of a balloon. So that's why a lot of people think, well, I'm losing muscle. What am I doing wrong? When it's, it's really just bloat and, and gunk in your system that you're losing, and you need to get past that in order to really get into the full-on fat-burning program. Now, with that being said, there are some strategies that we can implement to help minimize muscle loss and maximize fat burning as well. Uh, one such strategy is to incorporate like a carbohydrate cycle diet rather than just a straight on low calorie diet all the time. 
by strategically cycling your calories and your carbohydrate intake, You'll go through phases where you help to replenish muscle glycogen and help to rebuild any lost muscle tissue, and then go through phases of uh, moderate caloric deficit for fat loss, and then even some aggressive caloric uh, deficit for you know more extreme fat loss, and you can cycle through that. And this is a strategy that I use for a lot of my personal coaching students, where we go through a carbohydrate cycle diet. And... Most people who follow this get really good results because it helps to keep your metabolic rate elevated and it, Literally, you're going through a little mini bulking and cutting phase throughout the week So you'll make better progress over the long term versus if you just try to stay in a caloric deficit all the time So if, if you'd like some help with this Just send me an email or head on over to my website at leehayward.com and up in the top menu bar of my website There's a link there called coaching Click on that and you can sign up for a free 20 minute coaching call with me. And like I said, I can explain this to you over the phone. We can discuss your personal situation and see if we can come up with some realistic strategies to help you with your muscle building and fat loss goals. So if that's something you're interested in, and that, this applies to anybody watching this, if you would like some help with this, just head on over to leehayward.com and again, click on the link in the top menu bar that says coaching and sign up for a free 20 minute coaching call with me. In fact, before I, I did this uh, video chat today, I had two two coaching calls today that I did uh, with a, a couple of guys, and we had some really good discussions and came up with a, a plan of action to help them with their program over the next several months. All right, moving on, we have OO joining us. I'm not sure if it's OO or uh oh, but anyway, it says he's 31 years old, 260 pounds, has gallbladder issues, was super lean a couple of years ago. Uh, go heavy or light on weights and cardio. Well, if you're just getting started and getting back into the gym, I would recommend obviously starting off light and just gradually working your way into it. Uh, if you want a sample beginner's program that you can follow, head on over to my main YouTube channel. Uh, right there on the main channel page, there is a playlist for beginners. And there's a total body beginner's workout program. It's a three day per week beginner's program start with that it's a, a simple program you should be able to do it at pretty much any fitness center and if you do have any uh, issues with you know some of the equipment doesn't jive with what you have available just let me know and i'll suggest some exercise substitutions but that is a program that i want you to follow you can follow that for the next six weeks or so and that will help to build your conditioning build your strength and endurance up and then after that if, if you're ready then we can move into a more advanced program so that's what i would recommend you start with is the total body beginners workout and again there's a link to it right on my main youtube page we have lander joining us lander man he says carb loading necessary for muscle gains the whole idea of carb loading it's is it necessary no <laughs> but to, can it help can it be a part of your nutrition program yes and it really depends on the overall program that you're following uh, again, uh, I need to know more about what it is that you're doing. Um, but just to kind of throw some ideas out there, like that strategy that I mentioned earlier about the carb cycling for fat loss, we could also use that same strategy uh, just in basically in reverse and apply it to building muscle as well. And in fact, I have a muscle building program that utilizes uh, carb loading or, or cycling and it's called the cycle bulking diet if you want to check it out it's at cyclebulkingdiet.com and that involves a strategic cycle program that tips the scale in favor of lean muscle gains while minimizing excess body fat in the process and that's one of the biggest problems that a lot of guys have is when they bulk up they end up gaining a lot of extra fat along with the muscle so we need to be strategic in order to maximize the lean muscle gains while minimizing the body fat in the process. We have Christos is joining us and he says, Lee, what documentaries do you watch to raise your intelligence? Documentaries, huh? I haven't really watched a lot of documentaries lately. This is interesting. I do listen to a lot of podcasts i do read a lot of books i study different courses um oh as far as documentaries trying to think of some some good ones that i've seen lately and i'm kind of drawing a blank here right now 
uh, rather than wasting time here, I'll have to get back to you on that one because honestly, I, I've just lately I've been so busy with my my work and uh, have different projects on the go that I haven't watched much TV at all, let alone watching documentaries. So um, yeah, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Where day at dough? Let's see what he's got here. Are dumbbells better than barbells for chest? No, not necessarily. There's there's advantages to both dumbbells and barbell exercises. And some exercises you, you need a barbell for, some exercises you need dumbbells for. So it, it, it's not that one is better or, or worse. It's just they're, they're different tools that you have available. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example, like for some interchangeable exercises, like with the bench press, for example. Uh, a barbell bench press will generally allow you to lift heavier. Uh, it tends to be a more secure exercise because you're only balancing one weight, whereas if you're doing a dumbbell exercise, you have to balance two. Uh, with with a barbell, a lot of guys find it easier to lift heavier because uh, you know you you have the the barbell set up in a rack. You can on rack it and and rack it. Versus with dumbbells, you have to kind of wrestle them up and, and wiggle them into position. Unless, of course, you have a couple spotters who can hand you the dumbbells, which, you know, that's a different situation entirely. Um, but as, you know, th there's pros and cons to both. Uh, I generally, I'll break it down for you how it usually works. Uh, a machine exercise will more often than not allow you to lift the most weight. And the reason for that is because you can exert maximum force and you don't have to balance or stabilize it. So if you're doing like a chest press machine or maybe a Smith machine bench press or something like that, you'll probably be able to lift heavier than you would with a free weight bench press. And again, the reason is because there's no balance or stabilization. You can just exert maximum force. With a barbell, you have to balance one weight. So there's, there's more muscle activation. There's more balance and stabilization required. Uh, with dumbbells, you have to balance two weights and they can twist and roll and, and you know, your hands can move closer and further apart. So there's a lot more uh, of that three-dimensional movement, there's a lot more play involved, and that requires more uh, stabilization than it does to use either a barbell or a machine. So the more on balance you get, the lighter you're going to have to lift in order to compensate for that. And th there's advantages to using these unstable weights because, again, they build the stabilization muscles and they require a higher level of neuromuscular activation. But at the same time, for someone who's probably new to lifting, if they don't have that balance and that coordination yet, it's, it's probably not gonna be the best use of their time. So that's why I generally recommend beginners to start off with machine exercises first, and then as they get more advanced, transition into the barbell and to the dumbbell variations afterwards as they develop that coordination balance and, and security in their body where they can handle the weights and know that they're going to be safe and, and and effective in doing their exercises so it's not that one is better or worse it really depends on the situation and we have marie is joining us she is uh she totally agrees health and fitness are definitely a priority and it's way cheaper than constantly seeing doctors because of health reasons so she's commenting on one of the questions i asked before thank you for your your feedback marie uh, jesse is joining us says thanks that helps out a lot you're welcome okay we have 80s baby 90s kids show do mental exercises help in physical results with someone who eats right and exercises and reads books does crossword puzzles etc get better workout results does mental exercises help with physical results to a degree i think they could and it, it's it's not so much, well, well, I mean, this, this is a big topic. We can really expand on this. Let's just look at it from a, a practical point of view. I mean, when you get into the science behind diet and exercise and how the body works and, and everything else, it, it can get complicated. I mean, this isn't some like, you know, s s simple, easy stuff. I mean, there's a lot to it. That's why we have you know, hundreds and hundreds of books. I mean, there are textbooks uh, on human anatomy. And I mean, it, it gets pretty darn intense. Now, I'm not saying you have to be like a medical doctor or a scientist to understand it, but there's a lot to it. So the smarter you are and the more you can kind of comprehend and understand how the body works, 
then that's going to help to carry over into you making better progress in the gym. And I think if you have more mental discipline, that's also going to help to carry over into making better progress in the gym. I mean, fitness is just as much mental as it is physical. And, and very often, you know, people fail not because of the physical side of it, it was because of the mental side. Either they can't handle the, the stress or they can't handle the, you know, I guess the distractions. They don't have the ability to focus. I mean, there's a lot of things. So mental exercises can definitely help. And I tell you one mental exercise that I think can, can really help, and that is meditation and learning how to focus and calm your mind and also how to prioritize things. That is definitely going to help. Because when you have all this stuff coming at you, if you can have a way to just focus and block out all that other shit, <laughs> then you can really zone in and get better results. So, for example, like when you're in the gym, let's say we're going to do a, a, a workout. If you have the ability to focus on the workout and to put all the other distractions in your day out of your mind and just focus in on what's important, what's in front of you right now, even though... You know, you, you have the, the bills have to be paid, even though you have, you know, maybe work projects or exams at school or other things calling at your attention, even though whatever, <laughs> right? Even though the world could be falling apart around you, if you can just block that out and focus on the task at hand, do your workout, and then after your workout is done, then deal with all the other crap that's coming at you, you will make better progress versus if you're in the gym. And you're kind of like half ass going through your workouts while you're also stressed out about everything else. That's going to hinder your progress overall. So, yes, having the ability to mentally focus as well as the ability to mentally comprehend all the stuff that's going on, I think is definitely going to give you an edge over someone who is not as mentally sharp. All right, we have uh, Azim joining us. He's a regular to our video chats. He says, Thanks for all the information. My question is regarding healthcare. What's your opinion about chiropractors? Um, chiropractors, I, I think they can definitely uh, have, have a, an impact. I mean, I, I know, I'll give you an example. I remember a few years back, my wife hurt her back in the gym, and she went to uh, visit a chiropractor, and they helped to uh, realign her spine and also do some treatment. So some of these alternative I mean, it's not really alternative. It's kind of mainstream nowadays, but some of these non-traditional doctor approaches, such as chiropractors and alternative healthcare, I think it definitely has a place in your overall health and fitness program. And a lot of times you see even like top level bodybuilders, top level athletes, strongman competitors will regularly go to chiropractors to get alignments done because of all the, the strain that you're putting on your body in the gym, you can sometimes create tension and probably misalignments in, in your spine. So I mean, getting that realigned from time to time can help to uh, help just make things function better. So yeah, I mean, I definitely believe that there is a, a time and a place for it. You know, things like that, things like deep tissue massage is another one. Um, you know, there, we, we can go on, there's a lot we could talk about, but that is definitely uh, something worth looking into. I mean, if you've never been to a chiropractor before, and if you are experiencing any neck, back, pains or anything like that or any unexplained aches or pains or issues i mean who knows the root cause could be that you need to get your you know your, your spine realigned so i mean something to look into and jack is asking can you build muscle without using weights so i guess you mean by body weight exercises yes you can definitely build muscle using body weight exercises and i'm going to give you a prime example Look at male gymnasts or female gymnasts. I mean, I'm, I'm using male because we primarily have a male audience here, but look at gymnasts, I mean, male and female. I mean, these athletes have incredible physiques and they primarily do body weight exercises. So, I mean, that's just one example. Uh, sometimes if you go on YouTube and you do search for like, um, what do they call it? Bar stars is one group. But these guys who do playground workouts where they go to, to the playgrounds and they use like the, the bars and the playground equipment and they're just doing body weight exercises. I mean, some of these guys are in incredible shape just doing primarily body weight exercises. So, I mean, yeah, you can get in crazy shape just using body weight. Now, I personally like to have the combination of 
resistance machines, free weights, and body weight. I like to have it all because I find that there's there's certain exercises you can't do with body weight. There's certain exercises you can't do with free weights. So having the, the whole spectrum of body weight exercises, free weight exercises, machine exercises, it just allows you to, to do so much more. But if you are limited, you can certainly make some good results with just body weight alone. Okay, we have Pinkish Jane and saying how to stay disciplined during a fat loss journey to stick to the diet for two weeks and then back to normal. Oh, sorry, I stick to the diet for two weeks and then back to normal eating junk food. All right, that is that's the magic. That's the million dollar question there, right? How do you stick to a fat loss diet? So you find that after two weeks, you you just can't take it anymore, and you're pigging out and going back to normal. What I would recommend is whenever you do have a little slip up in your diet, and that's normal, right? It, it, I'm telling you right now, it, it's normal to have slip ups from time to time. If you can, even pre-plan them. So for example, if, if, if you want, structure your diet in such a way that you diet for five days out of the week. So like say you're going to diet from Monday to Friday, and then you're going to give yourself some freedom on Saturday and Sunday. I mean, this is a, a very simple approach, but it can work to help to ease yourself into a fat loss diet and to be more consistent. So diet strict Monday to Friday, then on Saturday and Sunday, give yourself some freedom to enjoy some of the foods that you want to eat, you know, so some of the foods that you're craving. And if, if you just do that alone, that's going to help to move you in the right direction. And then what you can do is uh, Monday to Friday, excuse me, Monday to Friday diet strict, Saturday and Sunday, uh, again, give yourself some freedom, but instead of cheating all day long, maybe save those cheat meals for later in the day. So it's still eat clean all day long and then probably, you know, in your later meals, have your cheat meals. And this was a strategy that I actually learned from Jay Cutler. I mean, several years back, we had him as a guest poser, and uh, he did a seminar at one of our local bodybuilding shows. In fact, he was here a couple of years in a row. He was he uh, guest posed and did seminars for us, and really, really nice guy. I mean, he hung out with us afterwards. Like he went down downtown, went out to the to the clubs and stuff with us afterwards. I mean, it was pretty crazy. You're going throughout the club, and Jay Cutler, right? <laughs> going throughout the place. I mean, of course, he got a lot of attention from everybody. I mean, some of the people who didn't follow bodybuilding were like, Who, who's the new bouncer? Holy shit, he's huge, right? <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. But anyway, one of the tips that Jay Cutler had when he uh, did his seminar is he was talking about cheat meals. And he says he always likes to save his cheat meal for later in the day. And the reason for that is because you don't ruin a full day of eating. You, you still get the cravings out of your system, but you don't ruin a full day of eating. So you still eat clean all day long, and then maybe for your last meal of the day, that will be your cheat meal. That's when you'll have your, your pizza, or your ice cream, or your french fries, or whatever it is that you're craving. Have it as your last meal of the day. And this will still satisfy the craving, but it won't blow the entire day. And ultimately, it will minimize the amount of junk food that you are going to eat during your cheat. Because if you start a cheat day, like say first thing in the morning, you start cheating right from the get-go, like your first meal, then it's like, oh, I, I blew the day. It's just well to continue cheating. So then you end up cheating all day long and you, you feel like crap by the end of the day because you've consumed so much junk food. Whereas if you saved it for later in the day, you still get the satisfaction of satisfying those cravings. You still get the satisfaction of your cheat meal, but you do less total damage and you can consume less total junk food. So it's a, a good strategy to implement. And it's something that I like to do if I am going to have a cheat meal. I usually save it for later in the day and I find that it works really well. So again, go, going back to my whole strategy here, it's normal to stray from your diet, but pre-plan it in advance. And then as soon as you're finished with that cheat meal or that, that cheat day, whatever you're going to have, get back on track for your very next meal get back on track for your very next meal so that that's the key and just keep starting it again so we plan out a week monday to friday we're going to diet strict saturday and sunday in the evenings we're going to have some freedom we're going to have a couple cheat meals and then next monday boom we're back on the diet again 
and you just keep repeating that over and over again, and that will move you in the right direction towards your fat loss goals. And then, of course, once you start to plateau with that, then maybe you'll have to tighten it up a little bit more, either diet stricter during the weekdays or go a little bit less on the cheats during the weekends or whatever. I mean, there, there's different strategies we can implement, but that will move you in the right direction. That'll get the ball rolling. All right, let's keep going here. I know I sometimes uh, get off on a rant here sometimes. I know some people may enjoy my little rants. Obviously, you're, you're here watching me, so you must enjoy them. <laughs> If you didn't enjoy them, you wouldn't be here watching me right now. All right, let's see what else. I, I lost my place again. Um, where was I? All right, we have Filipino Gains saying, serious question, dot, dot, dot. Is too much sex and masturbation bad for muscle gain? Well, I can tell you from personal experience, I don't have the problem of too much sex, especially <laughs> especially now with a new baby at home. So I sometimes wish I had the problem of too much sex, but no, I, no nothing against my wife. She's God lover. She's doing the best she can. But sometimes when you have a, a new baby at home, it's just exhausting and, and he takes priority. Uh, okay. But is too much sex and or masturbation bad for muscle gain? I, I guess it really depends on what is too much. I mean, anything that is done in excess can be, you know, have negative consequences. So if, if, if it's moderate, like, I mean, like, let's say, you know, three times a week or, or something like that, I don't think that's going to have any negative implications for your, your muscle gains. If it's excessive, I mean, if, if you're like, you know, every day or, or multiple times a day, then that's that's borderline obsession and there's probably something I, I would definitely try and scale that back because I, th I think that would be uh, excessive I mean it's not only excessive in, f in terms of the physical side of things but it can be excessive in terms of, of the the mental side of things so yeah I think it can be negative in, in excess but in moderation uh, I mean, it's just a normal part of life. Right? Everybody has has these urges. I mean, as a part of you as a human being, that's why we're here is because we have these natural urges. But again, I think it just comes down to moderation. And again, moderation is the key when it comes to so many things, including sex and masturbation. All right. I mean, I go on to another rant story here. I mean, sometimes if you do too much, I mean, it can have negative consequences. Like you can cause physical harm to yourself, right? If for like sometimes you can actually, well, I'm not going to go into it. It's just too, it's too graphic. I'm going to leave it at that, right? It's, it's, never mind. I'll just leave it at that and answer the next question. <laughs> Jesse is joining us, and Jesse says, in your opinion, what would you consider unnecessary exercise movements? Unnecessary exercise movements. Well, hmm. I'm trying to th think of this because, I mean, the, when you get into it and, like, break down different exercises, sometimes there's a time and a place for, for a lot of them, but... What I would focus on is what should your priority be? And let's just say for a beginner, uh, I would focus primarily on just one basic exercise for each major muscle group for a beginner. So just keep it simple. Basic compound exercises, multi-joint exercises, just keep it simple. As you get more advanced, then that's when you can add in some more different exercise variety, exercises that are going to hit muscles from different angles or positions. Uh, sometimes... You might want to swap out different exercises. So, for example, like if, if you're having trouble developing a certain body part, then that's where you could probably implement different isolation exercises to target that muscle group in, in a unique way. So as far as what are unnecessary exercises, it, it really depends on, on the individual and the situation. Now, I know we can probably go to some extreme, like you see some of these weird uh, movements, like people doing kickbacks with, you know, like, like inner and outer thigh with a, a ankle weights or, or something like that. I mean, I, I consider, you know, weird stuff like that to be unnecessary. Uh, sometimes if people are doing a lot of uh, foam rolling or, or different, you know, mobility exercises, in, in some cases that's really unnecessary, you know, unless you have certain joint or, you know, 
mobility issues that require those exercises. I mean, I see a lot of people doing a lot of things that they really don't need to be doing. Like sometimes you'll see beginners in the gym and they probably read about, you know, a, a mobility exercise or they read about foam rolling. And I mean, you got people who are like totally out of shape. I mean, they just need to be focusing on the basics, you know, fundamental exercises and they're in there doing all these weird wacky stuff and sometimes doing these weird exercises with bands or, or whatever. I mean, in that situation, I consider it unnecessary, but for some other people, it's probably effective. So, I mean, what would be unnecessary for one person might actually be necessary for somebody else, depending on their training situation. So it, it's really hard to give these one size fits all answers because, you know, we're all unique and we're all individual and, you know, it, it usually doesn't come down to that. So uh, let's, let's move on. <laughs> we have AT expert. Nah, you can be a total meathead and everything will be the same. Okay, good for you. Be a total meathead and hope for the best. Uh, MS Videos just wants to say, hey. Hey. <laughs> DGAT saying, I took a hard manual part-time labor job. I have lost some weight, mostly fat. How often should I live to maintain muscle mass? At least twice a week, full body is what I'm thinking. I uh, I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head. If I were doing a hard physical labor job, I w you would have to scale back your weight training accordingly. Now, as far as, as how much and how often, again, that, that's really going to depend on your individual fitness level and your individual work capacity. But two full body workouts, I mean, that's enough to stimulate muscle growth. It, it really, if, if you're in a jam and you want to just get the best bang for your buck in terms of the most efficient time in the gym, the best results for the least amount of time, two total body workouts a week will move you in the right direction. And of course, your, your hard physical labor job, I mean, that's going to increase your metabolic rate. That's going to burn a lot of calories. So there's no need to do extra cardio on top of that. Your, your work is going to be your cardio. And then the workouts in the gym uh, will help stimulate muscle mass. And try to uh, structure your workouts in such a way that you're working body parts or that you're not hitting with your, your manual labor job. Because I, I don't know what it is that you're doing, but sometimes uh, when you're doing a manual labor, like there might be a lot of, of lifting or a lot of gripping or a lot of you know repetitive movements doing certain things. Well, if you're doing a lot of repetitive movements, depending on what type of job you're doing, then try to avoid doing those same repetitive movements in the gym and work on other areas that maybe not getting as much emphasis. So for example, like a, a mechanic, if you're doing a lot of things with your hands, right, you know, a lot of gripping and twisting wrenches and, and you know, things of that nature, uh, then obviously you wouldn't want to do much grip or forearm work in the gym, right? Because you're getting all that through your job. So just adjust it accordingly and try and, you know, structure your workout so that you're being the most efficient that you can and again, getting the best results for the least amount of time. All right. Uh, MS Video says, I love your videos. Well, thank you for the feedback. Much appreciated. We have T Teco, T or Toka, not sure, T E T O K A, T Toka. Uh, hi, Lee. I'd love to incorporate a full body workout. If you could only choose five exercises, what would they be? All right. Let's see. A full body workout. I would do some form of uh, squat exercise. I'd probably do some form of a deadlift exercise, some sort of a bench press exercise. I mean, your three power lifts, obviously. I'd incorporate one of, of each of those. I'd probably do some sort of overhead press, and I would do some sort of row. I think if you did all those, a, a squat, a deadlift, a bench press, uh, overhead press, and a row, you would hit all your major muscle groups. Now, you can do different variations of those exercises. I mean, it could be like a back squat, could be a front squat, uh, a deadlift, you know, you know, it could be a conventional deadlift or a sumo deadlift, you know, or a trap bar deadlift, whatever you fancy. Uh, the bench press could be barbell or dumbbell. Shoulder press could be barbell or dumbbell. Rows could be barbell or dumbbell. But those are the movement patterns that I would do. Uh, you know, bench, squat, deadlift, row, and overhead press. All right, we have another question. Oh, shoot, I lost my place again. All right, no, I got it back. Okay, again, the regulars know I have this little scroll wheel on my mouse, and sometimes when I scroll, 
it uh, it jumps a bunch of questions, but I got my place saved here. Granny Spinner. <laughs> Gotta love the username. Your most favorite bodybuilder and powerlifter, and did you see the Olympia? Uh, no, I didn't see the Olympia this year. I, I wasn't in, in Vegas to watch it, and I didn't catch the, the webcast or the live stream or whatever either. But uh, uh, interesting to see the Olympia title change hands, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's something you don't see very often, and it causes an uproar in the whole bodybuilding world when it does happen. Uh, my favorite bodybuilder of all time, I have to say, Dorian Yates. Um, he was the reigning Mr. Olympia back when I was getting started for bodybuilding. I mean, when I first started, it was Lee Haney. Lee Haney was Mr. Olympia. But once I got into serious bodybuilding and, and started competing and all that, Dorian Yates was the reigning Mr. Olympia. So he had a big impact uh, on my training, you know, just, just following the magazines and me. Uh, reading his articles and watching his videos uh, at the time. I'm not talking YouTube videos. I'm talking his VHS blood and guts video, right? The black and white video, right? The, the one of the best bodybuilding workout videos made because before this, every workout video were just these exercise demo videos, right? Where people are using ridiculously lightweight and they have the perfect, you know, studio setup. Uh, and the camera lighting and they're all tanned and oiled and all this BS and they're doing these, you know, studio photo shoot type videos. Whereas Dorian Yates's video was just like, hey, you take a camera and follow me around the gym. Right? I, I just want you to shoot my real workout and, and don't bother me. So, I mean, the camera was just like the fly on the wall to see, see the real workout as it was happening. Uh, so that, that was, you know, that had a big impact on me and my training and of course reading his his books and articles and stuff so yeah he was my favorite bodybuilder and even today i mean the way he's evolved since since retiring from bodybuilding i mean he is a very intelligent man and i i encourage you to follow him on social media if you haven't already and uh, he's done some really good interviews with london real the uh, whole interview series i mean He's done several with them, and they've even made a little documentary series with uh, Dorian Yates. And somebody was asking about documentaries earlier. That's one that I would definitely recommend, the one that they did with London Real. Uh, again, just you do a Google search, and you'll be able to find it. Uh, but again, that's uh, my favorite bodybuilder. As far as powerlifters, I, I haven't been following powerlifting as much as I have bodybuilding. But if I would say my favorite powerlifter, the one that I actually got the most uh, – education and insights from it had to be Louis Simmons. I mean, I, I followed all Louis programs back in the day. I have all the, uh, the old West side barbell VHS tapes. I mean, you go down in, in, in our, our basement, we got the shelf lined off with all the VHS West side barbell tapes. And I mean, I watched those things over and over again, uh, followed the West side method when I was training for powerlifting back in the uh, mid two thousands. And it worked really well for me. I made some really good gains, not only in terms of strength gains, but helping to fill up my physique with, with, with solid muscular body weight during that time as well. You know, it was ironic because I was training powerlifting, and I did that for several years. And then when I got back into bodybuilding after that, that's when I actually uh, made some some of my best gains and you know moved up a weight class and everything else. So I having that powerlifting base can really help with, uh, with bodybuilding as well. So yeah, to answer your question, favorite bodybuilder, Dorian Yates, favorite powerlifter, Louis Simmons. Uh, Amara is joining us. He says, what are the best exercises for grip strength? There's a lot. Uh, if I had to just limit it to one, I would say heavy grips, heavy hand grippers. Uh, here we are. Here, I got some here. These are available on my website. I'm a huge fan of these. I started using these back in 2004, and it's the single best tool that I can recommend for increasing your grip strength, heavy grips, hand grippers. And what I would recommend is use these like three days a week at the end of your workout. So it doesn't matter what body part you train, but you go to the gym and like say when you come home from the gym, then immediately go through a workout routine with the hand grippers. And if you get the hand grippers off my website, I'll send you a free workout tr hand gripper training manual, uh, the exact manual that I use to uh, train these grippers. And 
there, there's a right and a wrong way to use these. I mean, most people just use a really ridiculously light gripper and they're just endlessly squeezing and squeezing, doing, you know, 100 reps with that little cheap plastic gripper. The heavy grippers, they go from 100 pounds in tension, and this is a 100 pound gripper, all the way up to 350 pounds in tension. So you can train your grip with progressive overload. You can do uh, heavy singles, heavy negatives. And, you know, there, there's a lot of ways that you can really maximize your grip strength and, and train it with high intensity. And that's why I recommend the heavy grips, hand grippers. So uh, if you want, just again, head over to my website, leehayward.com. And then in the side menu bar, scroll down, and you should see a link there for the hand grippers. All right, moving on. I'm going to answer another couple questions before we clue it up for the day. Uh, Pinkish Jane says, one more query as you told me to pre-plan the cheat meals and you told me to get back on track ASAP. Um, okay. So the rest of the meals, we should reduce the calories and keep it up for the cheat meals to nullify. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. Just to kind of rehash that, how I, I explained it. If you're struggling, like when you're following a fat loss program, a lot of people, they, they struggle because you can't be in a caloric deficit forever, right? I mean, your, your, your body just will not allow it. Eventually, something's going to give. You're going to, your, your cravings, your temptations is going to give, and you're going to want to get off your diet. And, and this is kind of like a survival mechanism because if you're following a low calorie diet, uh, your metabolism is going to slow down to match the low calorie intake. Your Everything is going to slow down. So your body as a natural survival mechanism, I mean, it's going to increase the cravings. It's going to increase the desire to eat and force you to actually go out, out of your way to eat. So if you can pre-plan that into your fat loss program, you can ultimately stick to the program longer and make better progress. So yeah, have days planned where you are going to be in a caloric deficit and you're going to be following very strict meal plan. And then have a couple days planned where you're going to purposely go into a caloric surplus satisfy those cravings and even you know if, if you want to if you must have a cheat meal have one but what you'll find is as you get into a habit of eating better and cleaner your cravings for junk food is going to diminish and you're going to start craving more healthy food like in, in my case for example i i don't usually crave a lot of like junk food like i don't want sweets or cookies or ice cream or anything like that because I have healthy alternatives that I crave instead. For example, instead of ice cream, I'll have a, a blender smoothie with protein powder and frozen berries and I'll mix it up nice and thick so that it actually eats like a like an ice cream and that gives me the sweet, cool taste of ice cream without all the fat and sugar of ice cream. So I mean you can come up with healthier alternatives and other things like for example, I don't eat a lot of, you know, cakes or cookies or anything like that because uh, I enjoy other natural unprocessed foods better. So you'll find that as you get into a healthier eating, your palate is going to change and you're actually going to start to crave more healthy food. And then when you do go for your cheat meals, you'll actually be, it, it's, it's really not cheating, but you're just going to be granting yourself higher portions of some of these foods that you would normally not eat if you're following a low calorie, uh, you know, calorie restrictive diet being in a deficit. So um, that's, that's what I'm getting at here. I mean, yes, you're going to pre-plan it. And if you do have those cravings and satisfy them, but over time, you're, you're going to find that your palate's going to change and you're naturally going to want to improve the quality of your diet all around. And I know you can probably hear him. Harvey is having a little tantrum fit running back and forth the hallway out there. Um, yeah, okay. In fact, I might have to clue. I'm sure you can hear that on, on the, you know, the video coming through there. I might have to uh, clue up this video. Shit. Yeah, all right. I'm going to have to clue up this video chat and go see what's on the go out there and give my wife a break because I'm sure she's uh, at her wits ends right now with Harvey uh, having his little tantrum fit. We had to head out today, run some errands, and he didn't get his nap on time. And he, unfortunately, we couldn't get him down for a nap then afterwards because he was too wired. So that's why he's having a bit of a tantrum fit because he never had a nap today. So I'm going to go out there and uh, relieve my wife and give her a break and uh, 
hopefully get Harvey down for a nap if, if that's possible. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much for the questions and the support. Uh, I know there's several questions left there that I didn't get to, but hey, hopefully we'll probably get to some of those questions in a future video chat. Again, thanks again for your support. I'll have the replay of this video chat posted up uh, within the next, well, it's, it's going to be posted up immediately, but I'll have the timestamps uh, to go along with it within the next 24 hours. So if you want to go back over it and just like jump to certain questions or certain topics that interest you the most, you can do that. And as always, I will have, I will actually, hold on. I'm going to give you an update here. I'm going to check my calendar real quick. Next Friday, uh, October 5th, next Friday, October 5th, there will not be a video chat. So I want to give you a heads up right now. I'm actually going to be traveling. I'm going to be heading to Vancouver, British Columbia next week. So there will not be a video chat next Friday. So I just want to let you know, especially the regulars who tune in every single week. Uh, but the following week, which is October the 12th, we'll be resuming. So next video chat will be October 12th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. And I'll send out an email notification as well, post it up on the YouTube channel so that uh, people don't, don't schedule time to be hanging out here for the, the video chat and realize, hey, where the heck's Lee to? Well, Lee won't make it next week. All right. Take care, guys. Have yourself a fantastic weekend, and I'll talk to you in two weeks' time. Take care. Over and out.